Welcome to Untold Physio Stories Podcast, your perfect commute resource with physio failures, successes, interesting cases, and more from the physio and rehab world with your host, Drs. Andrew Rothschild and Urson Religioso. Topical analgesics help patients alleviate pain and reduce discomfort. I recommend and use Helix Professional Pain Relief Creams with my patients. Helix has three new creams they've added to their line of topical analgesics. Joining their pain relieving cream is Triactive Therapy Cream, CBD Therapy, and CBD Clinical Creams. My patients have been raving about these creams and that's why I'm offering you an opportunity to try these in your practice. Email my exclusive promo code MMT2 to helix at helix4, the number 4, pain.com to receive samples of these new professional pain relief creams and find a medical to supply distributor near you. You'll get a starter kit with several samples, patient information brochures, and it's a great way to help patients and grow your practice. Welcome back to Untold Physio Stories Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E, with Modern Manual Therapy, the new uh, private network, the eclectic approach. Make sure to check that out. It's modmt.com slash members. And of course, Edge Mobility System, my co-host, again, missing in action. But I have one of my favorite guests, Dr. Malik Parker, back with, with us today. I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, Malik is one of my genius mentees who... Um, basically figured out a hip case with a crazy directional preference that I don't think I would ever would have gotten to, but now I think about it. So I'll be sure to link to that one in the show notes. How's it going today, Malik? Oh, it's going well, Dr. E. Thanks for having me on. Um, you definitely oversold me with that. I just test things until they work. Sometimes I look, I look good. Sometimes I look crazy. Right. Well, we, we have your successes on here and you also share them on the new network. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, so what do you have for us today? I just wanted to talk to you about something that I noticed recently with um, a couple patients, and they didn't necessarily come in for this, so it was kind of just something on the back of their minds and maybe that we would think about later. But uh, last week I was treating a patient actually for her lower back and into the right hip, right knee, difficulty with stairs, and we were doing well with right side glides. So when she came in, she was like, yeah, you know, I'm doing pretty well with that. But I have this thumb pain, you know, if we could if we could look at that. Um, and she had mentioned it before, but it's something that, you know, we kind of glossed over for maybe a later visit. And since her, you know, normal complaints were doing okay, I was, I was thinking about a patient I had a couple of weeks ago who actually responded to retraction. So bilateral thumb pain, diagnosis of like bilateral decor veins, getting like cortisone injections. She was even getting uh, PRP injections just trying to figure out something to, to help. And I just decided, why don't we just test the neck and try some repeated retractions. And within 30, 30 reps, both sides were able to abolish. So it made me think of a couple different cases I had. I had one two weeks ago, same thing. And then maybe a year or so before that. So I wonder if you've had any bilateral thumb pain right kind of in that you know that typical anatomical stuff box the corvains area respond to retraction simple retraction cervical extension. retraction no simple cervical no. yeah i mean i guess it's possible that i didn't ask would you treat like do you treat like the republic of gamers or something like <laughs> no, up with the bilateral thumb pain and they were all i mean i don't this is a very small sample size but they're all maybe like 50 to 70 older females so I'm not, hmm. there's no real, I don't know. Like, and I wonder if it was something like crocheting or hmm. um, something that yeah. you do for a prolonged period of time in a flex position. No, I mean, I haven't seen that. I, it's, I mean, it's one of the first things I check anyway. It yeah. Would be cervical yeah. retraction. And I guess if it was bilateral, I wouldn't load it. I wouldn't be biased to load it one way or the other. But no, I haven't, uh, I haven't checked it. But there you have it. I mean, if you see anyone with a diagnosis of bilateral to queer veins. <laughs> Especially bilateral. I mean, usually that's Especially the flag, right? It's like, well, yeah. there's got to be something, something central going on. Most likely, in most cases, even if one is stronger than the other, usually one is like more pronounced than the other. But they both seem to respond in all three of those cases, at least. Yeah, that's great. Were they happy? They were happy, yeah. 
And they were just like, wow, right. this is all I needed to do for this whole time. And, you know, right. I can't, yeah. I can't, can't confirm because one was last week and one was maybe two to three weeks ago. And I haven't seen them for the second visit. So or, or yeah. post doing that. So we'll see if it sticks. But, with them being yeah, that, slightly, yeah, with them being slightly on the older side, were any of them kyphotic? Uh, yes, very much so. But they're, they're, the complaints we were working on were, were low back. So I didn't really dig into their neck history. So I'll have to see, like, did they, did they have any concordant neck pain? The one that I saw last, she didn't have any active neck pain at the time. But she, yeah. she said she had a history of neck pain. Yeah. I mean, the only thing this reminds me of is actually early on in my residency, way back in 1998, I had a patient, um, who I, I'm surprised my mentor gave him to me because he was like the he was a good friend of his, and also um, his son was like um, like a, a a PT student who was also ended up doing his PT degree and his PhD degree. And anyway, like he he was treating him for a while for bilateral leg pain. Um, and he was just doing like it seemed like stenotic. He was an older gentleman. Um, so I think he was doing like traction and just stabilization and stuff. Yeah. Um, some manual therapy to his hips, that kind of thing. And he came to me one day and it, um, I think it, it might've been even that he wasn't on the schedule, but he needed to, he had some kind of like neck pain flare up or something. So because it was like totally different and I had room on my uh, caseload for an eval, I ended up seeing, um, so I just start with retractions and um his this retractions only made his neck pain go away but it made this like persistent leg pain bilateral leg pain to below the knee also go completely away really so, i don't know if that, that's that's amazing i've never seen that that's hmm. yeah well i was just thinking like we discussed it later i remember um, yeah with our case rounds like and i just said i don't know maybe he had like a large central protrusion on his cord or he had some sort of cord tethering or some sort of cord yeah. space issue and somehow retractions just freed that up or freed up the tethering. I don't know. I mean, I still think about that case every once in a while. I've definitely yeah. never seen that again. Did it completely abolish? Like that's all he did. It didn't come back or did you have follow up? Or did, were there follow up? Yeah. Where, I mean, we, yeah. We definitely yeah. followed up because he was coming in regularly for his legs yeah. anyway and just doing general strengthening and it was just gone. Yeah. Wow. Do you, do you think there's a possibility of just like the more pain science where you just increased the body's sense of safety so much for the upper complaints by doing retractions that it had just a generalized positive central nervous system effect? Well, I mean, I suppose that would be a great possible modern <laughs> manual therapy <Yeah>. collective approach <laughs> uh, explanation, which could definitely result in any improvement. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely being nonspecific. But uh, here's the thing: uh, in 1998, pain science wasn't invented yet, and uh, I was 100% pathoanatomical in all my explanations. You know, but I, yeah. it's not even like I I sold the idea of uh, manual therapy, non-specificity, and any of those things. I just, it was a total accident, you know. I was just doing retractions on him with maybe a little bit of overpressure, and he was just talking about how his leg pain was, like, going away that he currently had as I was doing it. That's awesome. Well, were you, were you so posture-wise, maybe being in, I'm assuming he was probably in an upright, slightly lordotic posture. Do you think maybe the prolonged yeah. just sitting in that position could have also been a contributor? It's possible. I mean, I don't know but, what my yeah. mentor was exactly doing until then. I don't know if he was just doing a lot of flexion-based things, assuming it was stenosis. Uh, yeah. But, you know, so it's it's very possible that he just also was in, in an extension position uh, for both, or at least less than total flexion. Less than normal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. And, that's uh, an odd, that's... I didn't mean you, to co-opt you just... your episode, but I mean it was. Oh no, that was a... it. Was another bilateral uh, extremity case that um, got better with cervical retraction. That's a that's a great one. You take the you take the the award right now for most interesting reduction or derangement reduction case. For sure, for sure. Maybe the McKenzie Institute will have me back. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta submit, write it up, and submit it. Sure. All right, Malik. Well, where can people find you? 
Uh, right now, you can find me at Malik Parker DPT on Instagram, and hopefully I'll be more active on social soon. All right. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Thanks for coming on. All right. Have a good one. Yep. All right, guys, if you like this episode or you have any kind of crazy physio failures or interesting cases, make sure to hit me up on social media at Modern Manual Therapy on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts on Apple, Spotify, or Google. Give us a five-star rating, and as always, you guys have a great day.